The global electric vehicle market is heating up, and China wants to dominate. The Chinese government has invested at least $60 billion to support the EV industry, and it's pushing an ambitious plan to transition to all electric or hybrid cars by 2035. In 2020, EV sales in the U.S. were far below Europe and China. Out of the 3.24 million electric cars sold, only 328,000 were in the U.S. 1.33 million were sold in China, and 1.39 million were sold in Europe. Let's take a look at how China came to control the market. The country decided over a decade ago that it wanted to be the world leader in electric cars. China is the world's biggest emitter of greenhouse gases and has pledged to be carbon neutral by 2060. In an effort to support the adoption of EVs, the Chinese government has played a massive role. It has spent tens of billions of dollars to support the sales of electric vehicles. China has subsidies and incentives that benefit automakers, suppliers, and consumers. China also has a quota system for manufacturers. They must produce a certain percentage of electric vehicles every year, or they are fined. But some question if this is sustainable. In 2019, after the government cut back on some incentives, sales fell, and the shares of EVs overall dropped from 8% in mid-2019 to 5% by the end of the year. But subsidies cannot last forever, and some think with the introduction of more luxury brands like Tesla, consumers can eventually be weaned off them. Besides subsidies, China's government also provides support in battery manufacturing and the supply chain. It's the leading producer of electric batteries and motors. Tesla has seen rapid growth in China after building a factory in Shanghai at the end of 2019. The company earned $6.66 billion in revenue from the country in 2020, and the Model 3 was also the best-selling NEV last year. Tesla's China-made Model Y began deliveries in January and was the third best-selling electric car in February. Though other foreign automakers make cars in China, they were all required to set up joint ventures with a Chinese automaker. SAIC owns 50% of GM in China. Ford also has two joint ventures there. But Tesla was able to get a unique deal in the country. But Tesla has lowered its price in China a couple of times, at first to qualify for subsidies and then because of cheaper Chinese-made batteries. Tesla also dominates the U.S. EV market. The company made up 79% of all electric cars registered in 2020. The only non-Tesla of the top five cars was the Chevy Bolt, which had around 19,000 vehicles registered, compared to the Model 3, which alone was over 90,000. The company's market cap grew over 500 billion in 2020, making it worth more than the nine largest automakers combined, even though it sells a fraction of the amount of cars. China sold roughly 1 million more EVs in 2020 than the U.S. With less aggressive subsidies and lack of battery manufacturing, the United States has its work cut out for it if it wants to catch up. Plus, the consumers in China and the U.S. are quite different. While the Chinese will buy miniature cheap EVs, Americans are more drawn to SUVs and gas-guzzling trucks. In fact, Ford's F-Series, which includes the F-150, remained America's best-selling vehicle for the 39th straight year in 2020. The F-Series brought in $42 billion in revenue in 2019, which is more than the NFL, NHL, NBA, and Major League Baseball combined. New EV trucks pose a threat to the truck maker's market share. There are a slew of electric trucks coming in the U.S. in the next few years, and a number of EV startups entering the space. American auto giants are making big changes, too. Make no mistake, this is General Motors and Mary Barra making a very clear and declarative statement right now. They will be fully electric, and they plan to be there at least by 2035. GM CEO Mary Barra said, We're committed to fighting for EV market share until we are number one in North America. China is GM's largest market worldwide when it comes to total vehicle sales. In the summer of 2020, it launched the Hongguang Mini with its joint venture Wu Ling. The small EV costs $4,400 and has seen rapid growth in sales. EVs are still a very small percentage of the global auto market, so it's still anyone's game. Automakers want to keep their customers happy, but also don't want to lose market share to EV startups or Tesla. In China, competition is growing rapidly. Warren Buffett-backed BYD's new luxury sedan jumped into the top 10 electric cars sold in China last year. China also has hundreds of EV startups. These include shorter range and lower price cars, but there are also notable luxury brands popping up to compete with Tesla. They include NIO, Xpen, and Li Auto. All three companies have seen high valuations in the past year. In the US, the race between the Detroit automakers and a slew of startups is starting to unfold. 
GM has unveiled the all-electric Cadillac and Hummer EV. Ford will debut the fully electric Mustang Mach-E. Then there are startups like Rivian, Canoe, and Bollinger Motors, all working on electric pickups. In Europe, Volkswagen is another automaker accelerating plans to dominate the EV space. In the fourth quarter of last year, it sold more EVs than Tesla, but that number includes plug-in hybrids. The German automaker expects half of U.S. sales to be electric vehicles by 2030. While China has a commanding lead, all hope is not lost for the U.S. to catch up. We've been the standard for the world in so many technologies here in America for 100 years that it's impossible for us to conceive of a future where we're not in charge, we're not the leader, we're not the standard setter. But the risks are real. We can come back. It's early days. Only 5% of total sales are electric. But the longer we wait, the harder it's going to be to do a comeback victory. But we better get our act together now.